Hey, everybody. My next guest is a contributing editor for This American Life on National Public Radio. Her latest book, which just came out in paperback, is a very funny collection of autobiographical essays called Take the Cannoli. Please welcome Sarah Vowell. Sarah, how are you? Hello, Conan. Uh, nice to have you here. Yeah. What, what have you been uh, working on? I know you're always working on a new story, a new angle. I'm working on a story about nerds. Nerds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I was doing a little research, and I have to tell you that if you do a web search for the word nerd, that your name comes up. <laughs> yeah, I would kind of imagine it would, yeah. But in the sweetest possible way. In you know, what like way there is was that? this one kid and he said, I heard Conan call himself a nerd last night. And if that's true, if Conan's a nerd, we're all nerds. Oh, that's that? sweet. Yeah. It's like and you're, sad. <laughs> like you're their James Bond or something. <laughs> I'm the James Bond of nerds. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> As nerds go, I'm like their cool leader. <laughs> I was, it's funny, because I was always obsessed with, you know, I, I wrote a Simpsons episode about the nerds versus the jocks, because I was so obsessed with, I just loved that idea that it was like the North and the South and the Civil War. Yeah. Are you doing other nerd research? Well, it's sort of about um, this email group, this political email group I'm on during the presidential election, where, you know, we would email each other polling statistics and debate the viability of the Democratic Party. Like, we're, and we were Gore supporters, so it was like a bunch of nerds rooting for this nerd. And, um, <laughs> Gore, Gore is like king of the nerds. He's king, he's king. Okay, I'm like the James Bond and he's the king. Okay, <laughs> exactly. that's great. He's like Q or M or something. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> We could go on. Uh huh. Did you ready. watch? Did you ever watch uh, Revenge of the Nerds movies? I, I, those are great movies. Well, I was just watching Revenge of the Nerds too and taking notes, which really makes you kind of question your own nerdiness when you're like <laughs> taking notes on it. Yeah, that would put you at a whole new level. <laughs> That would be able to put you at a level of nerdhood that, like, no one knows even well, exists. I, I'll tell you what, I was watching it, and it's the second one where the nerd frat goes to Florida for the frat convention. Yeah. And um, the, the cool frats want the nerds out of there, so they right. all dress up like Seminole Indians to scare the nerds away. Right, it's sort of a Scooby-Doo trick. Yeah, right. so it's like Ooga Booga, yeah, exactly. Right, right. Ooga Booga trying to scare the nerds, and one nerd, Poindexter, he, he the like... The best nerd. The best, the best. He, um, <laughs> my favorite, um, he, he, like, says all this gibberish to the Seminole Indians, and they don't do anything, and he right. tells his friend, I just said to them in Seminole, turn my crank, and they didn't do anything. Right. And I'm sitting there taking notes, and there's no such language as Seminole. The Seminole speak two dialects, <laughs> Creek and Nicky. <Nicole's> <laughs> wow. Don't you at that point think to yourself, oh my God. I, uh, what about, it's like nerds, when, yeah. it's like when someone realizes they're an alcoholic. That's yeah. like bottoming out. <laughs> yeah. It's like when the bartender knows your name. Right, it's right. Then you know you're yeah, a nerd. Exactly. When you're finding factual problems with Revenge of the Nerds yes. 2. <laughs> now, I understand you wrote former President Clinton recently. You wrote him yeah. a letter. Why did you write him? Oh, well, um, you know, he's planning his presidential library in mm -hmm. Little Rock, and so I visited some presidential libraries for him mm -hmm. and then sent him a memo with my findings about what he could learn, what he could do in his library. Okay, and what did you, what did like, you find? Like, I went to Eisenhower in Abilene, Kansas, and I went there because I thought, you know, they would display what it's like to... Um, you know, display economic prosperity like the Clinton years. Right. And uh, they just ignore that and spend the whole museum on Ike's military career. Right. Which, as military careers go, was hey, pretty good. Hard to do better than Ike. Yeah. That's why I have him on my desk at all times. Because I, I think this show is sort of. <laughs> I, this, this is my way of honoring the guy that won World War II for us. <laughs> Putting pencils in his head. Yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, he'd be very proud. Yeah. So I thought, well, I can still learn something here because there's this D-Day exhibit and there's this really cool showbiz part where it's like the beginning of Saving Private Ryan and you're on this ship's ramp and you can... St and you're you mean in like the visitor can take yeah, part, like the exactly. virtual reality thing. You're in the shoes of the soldier and you're looking ahead at this photo of your buddies going through the water, getting shot at. Right. And I, I thought, well, okay, the Clinton Library could do this. If, if Ike's greatest achievement is masterminding D-Day, 
then Clint's greatest achievement is balancing the budget, right. which I don't think they're going to make a Tom Hanks movie out of that. But still, right, right. I thought in the in the museum they could do this thing where instead of the the D-Day Omaha Beach thing, the visitor could be in the shoes of Alan Greenspan, and he could be he could be <laughs> stepping out of a Lincoln Town car into the Dirksen Senate office building to endorse the Senate deficit re uh, the Clinton deficit reduction plan before the Senate Banking Committee. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you like must be this high to get on that ride, because that's pretty no no pregnant women. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no epileptics can go on that. It gets too exciting yeah. and crazy, yeah. right? That's that little more fun. Yeah. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um I meant that. That's the sad thing. I'm a little, nerd. I would love to wing do it. Tips, yeah. you, you get you get in the, you get fitted for your wingtips exactly. beforehand. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. Yeah. Now, before we go, I have to I didn't get to ask you about this last time. You're you're from Montana. That's true. Gun country. Mm -hmm. Your dad is a gunsmith. Yeah. He makes and guns. that is and you, I just, you know, when you meet, I met you, I talked to you, I've met you several times. You've been on the show. I seem like the East Coast media elite. You sort of do. Yeah. And then your dad is I miss Hick. You're, well, how many guns are in the house? I don't know. Like, how many guns does your dad have just lying around? Dozens. Like, when I was a little kid, you know, you'd, like, come down for your Rice Krispies and then move the revolver out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Someone get these guns out of here. Yeah. Because the bowl, it doesn't balance on this. But, um... <laughs> It's when you start stirring with it, your cocoa, yeah. that you're in trouble. <laughs> but I never liked guns. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he made us shoot it once when we were six. He decided we should learn. Right. And I, like, you know, shot it, and it knocked me down, and that right. was enough of that. <laughs> right. But uh, recently, he made a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to say, so we went out in the mountains and shot up the cannon. The cannon is really cool. It Everyone was... should have a cannon. Yeah. Cannons are... <laughs> They should. I, I've seen cannons go off, and that just makes you a believer. We should all. I have. We have the right to each bear a cannon. I believe. Because totally. it's just like an art project. It couldn't. You couldn't really like actually rob a convenience store with that thing. <laughs> yeah, you get stuck in the revolving door. Exactly. So they're safe. It's like sculpture. Um, well, take the cannoli. It's in paperback now. Really funny book. Uh, go out there, get Take the Cannoli. And Sarah, thanks so much for coming back. Oh. It's always nice having you on the show. Sarah Bowell, everybody. We'll take a break. We'll be back. Stick around. That's our show. Do you want to thank my guests? Good night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.